Hello friends, welcome back today. We, we're gonna freeze all the things. In this video, I am gonna show you how to freeze bread, how to freeze flour, how to freeze eggs, how to freeze cheese, how to freeze milk, just how to freeze all the things, all the things. I've made um, actually so, uh, such a big list of how to freeze various things that I'm hoping to have a second video come out after this one. I just, I don't wanna to throw too much at you at one time. I'm already showing you like eight or 10 different things today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Jay Morell. This is Large Family Table, and I help mamas feed all their people. And right now, during these trying times, I am getting messages and emails and questions galore from mamas who are suddenly home or who have been home and y'all are just dealing with massive food management issues and questions and a lot of moms that I'm talking to are dealing with coming home with uh, odds and ends items from the grocery store, not getting half of what's on their list and just getting what they can. They're trying to make this work and stretch it and feed their families and I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. So I'm just gonna, based on my years of experience freezing things, freezing various things, doing freezer meals and feeding my family of 10, nine still at home, one, one has jumped ship, but I feed people all the time. So let me just, let's get started. I think I'm looking at my stuff here on the counter. I think we're gonna get started with how to freeze eggs. So let's, let's just jump right in. I'm doing all of my bazillion requested videos this Sunday afternoon. Finally got my KitchenAid mixer out and see, I need to rinse these off. Uh, because if you're new here, we're, we've recently moved. And if you've been around a while, you know, hey, Jamerell's finally not giving me a moving ball. We get to see her cook. Yeah. So when it comes to freezing eggs, now why would you want to freeze eggs? Well, eggs have an expiration date on them. Uh, you might also have backyard chickens. Maybe you're getting more eggs than you need. Uh, I know right now for my family, uh, because I generally have always shopped four to six weeks at a time and have built up my pantry and my stockpile and all that, even without major rural events going on. I know because we recently moved about a month ago now, and you never know when you move chickens if they will stop their egg production for a bit. My new flock of chickens actually just started laying this winter and they started laying eggs maybe, maybe a month before we moved, definitely two, I'm going to say a month. Let's just say a month. Um, so we've been getting eight to nine eggs or so a day total out of the 11. If you're new to chickens, not every chicken necessarily lays every day. They'll have, they have a little pattern. And if you have two or three that don't lay one day, well then the rest of them will. And it all works out in the end. So whenever I did my big grocery pickup order beginning of March, I got about about 15 dozen eggs or so, which again, in a large family, we can go through four dozen eggs if we're doing scrambled eggs for breakfast and all the large family moms said amen. <laughs> so right now I'm using up my store-bought eggs and we're building up a nice collection of eggs from our heads. So, so truly, I don't have a need in my real life right now to have frozen eggs, but I know there are mamas out there who need to freeze everything and need to preserve everything and also need more room in the refrigerator and all of these various, various life dynamics we've got going on right now. So it's not gonna hurt me to have frozen eggs in my freezer anyway. How would you use frozen eggs? Well, you can use frozen eggs just like regular old eggs. I have a variety of things we're gonna freeze eggs in. Uh, in a perfect world, if you had, and I know Tupperware and some other brands, they sell the egg containers, they're really cute, and I had one, and I, I really think I passed it on. I think several years ago, someone gave me, it was a dozen egg carton, and it was plastic, and it was from Tupperware, and that's really cute, but, I'm pretty sure I passed it on to another mama friend of mine. Anyway, if you have something like that, then you can just crack an egg in each little plastic egg holder, and then you will freeze that. Later, after it's frozen, you can pop the eggs out and then freeze them in a large baggie. Now, of course, a lot of us are at home. A lot of us don't have exactly what we'd want to work with. So I thought through what I had in my kitchen to freeze eggs in. 
Another thing you can do, and see this is something I don't have. The age old trick is freezing eggs in ice cube trays. I do not have, I don't own an ice cube tray. I don't, I don't, I don't. But see, if I could go to the store right now, I'd pick up four ice cube trays just to do this video, but I'm not going out. So, thinking through what I have. Oh, so if you have an ice cube tray, you can literally just crack an egg in each little holder for your ice and freeze it and then same thing, crack it. I feel like I need visuals here for you. Do some of my bags I was washing out. Um, crack each one of your eggs and then fill a freezer baggie and label it and your eggs should be good frozen in there for up to a year or so. Then whenever you want to make scrambled eggs for breakfast, if you need eggs in the freezer for baking, basically anything you would need an egg for, you can go to your freezer eggs and use them accordingly. Um, and again, some people mix their eggs first, some people do not. I'm not going to, that's our milk. I'm gonna show you how to freeze milk here shortly. So think it through with what I had on hand. I had already bought this little contraption for my Instant Pot to do egg bites in, in the Instant Pot, okay? And I thought, you know what, this will work well. I'm gonna crack an egg in each one of these and we're gonna freeze it, pop it out. Same thing, I've got these silicone muffin pans. I'm gonna crack an egg or two in each one. And then I have a bunch of these silicone little cupcake lighters. A lot of you probably have this. Just look around, see what you can find. You might have a reusable egg tray. You might have two or four ice cube trays that you can use. You can crack your ice in a bowl, use your ice cube trays to freeze your eggs, and then wash your ice cube tray with hot soapy water and you will be good to go. So this is, sad to say, a pack of store-bought eggs. That looks like these will hold about one egg per tray. And I know with us, I have upped our chicken, chicken uh, dynamics here. We have our 11 laying hens. And then I, I made a run on the local tractor hardware store when I saw all the things going on and I got more chickens. <laughs> so by the time um, our new little pullets are done, we will have 47 chickens. Yes, we will, and six turkeys. And I was reading last night about guinea fowl and ducks and geese, and we're just going all out here on the farm. So in a situation like that, but again, my family, we can easily use four dozen eggs for breakfast. Freezing eggs will be a perfect solution when we are overrun with eggs and when we overrun our friends and family with eggs, I can freeze any excess eggs for later. Now I will say when using these silicone baking pans, it's best to have them on a metal baking sheet before you do what I have done. So I will just carefully have to get them onto a baking sheet here, inch it on here. Th this, this is why you wanna have it on a sheet first. Let me just pull the band-aid quickly here. Oof, okay. That's another thing. You can also, if you have, have needs to have separate egg whites, separate yolks, you can separate your eggs beforehand and then have cubes of egg whites, cubes of egg yolks, what any way you, you need it for your eggs. I've got my mixer out because you'll see all kinds of emergency pantry, frugal cooking videos coming out for me based on what so many of you are telling me you need right now. I got another video where we're gonna do stand mixer, French bread, bunch of different types of easy breads for right now. Now I do save my eggshells for my chickens. If you are suddenly getting into backyard chickens this year. Um, some people wash them out first, some people bake them first. I never take any extra time to do anything. I give them to my chickens and out of three chicken flocks, I've never had a flock of chickens turn into egg eaters. The concern is, let me just give you some chicken tips in this freezer video, huh? Um, because there's the taste of the white and maybe some of the yolk in the egg, chickens may get a taste for their own eggs. But again, I give them their eggshells, and it could be two that mine dry. I'm not giving them wet. I mean, we fill this bowl with scraps throughout the day, so tomorrow morning they'll have a bowl of scraps. See, there's one of our blue from our Easter egg or chickens. 
Oh, and you give the eggs back to the chickens because it just, um, it helps with the calcium that they need for hard egg shells. Sometimes if chickens don't have enough of what they need, I think it's oyster shell that people put in with their food, you can get that in crumbles as well. That will help harden up their eggs. I haven't had that issue either, but I've read about it. So like most things, I know just enough to be dangerous. So far, out of our chickens, our Easter Eggers only lay this teal. But there are Easter Eggers that'll lay a lavender and even a bluer egg, and there's no taste difference with the eggs or anything. It's just a fun variety with the shell. And I'm gonna do some in these muffin cups case this is what you have at home. And let's just say, I mean, I know lots of people are giving and sharing and passing things on. And if someone has blessed you with some eggs and you're worried about using them in time, fill in the blank for the reasons. There's reasons and uses for this, so use it as it applies, right? So these eggs are going in the freezer. Obviously, not my chicken eggs with shells, but all these, we're gonna get these in the freezer. I'm gonna move on to the next thing. Once these are frozen, we will circle back to getting these in a bag. It's as simple as we're gonna put this tray of eggs in. Okay, so there's our two pans in here that'll freeze. So then this actually brings me to the very next thing. Super simple, but so important to freeze. Is that one of my chickens? Okay, odd sound. Could be a kid, could be a chicken, you never know. <laughs> Next thing we're gonna talk about freezing is bread. Now I started freezing bread way over a decade ago. My, As my little song and dance goes, we lived in our old little farmhouse. My husband was gone all the time, had a whole bunch of kids, had a really small grocery budget. My grocery budget was $250 to $300 a month. That's when I learned once a month grocery shopping. I would take all the kids, we'd go at the beginning of the month. I had a really tight frugal meal plan and I just, I, I worked every penny of that budget. I knew we needed 15 gallons of milk for the month. That, yeah, that is a chicken. <laughs> we needed 15 gallons of milk for the month. We needed about 15 loaves of bread. I had this one, actually it's the one over here. I had this extra refrigerator that I kept in my laundry room and I had my one refrigerator in my kitchen. And I would get the 15 gallons of milk for the month and the 15 loaves of bread and basically spend all of my grocery budget at the beginning of the month that included fresh fruits and vegetables, the way that we did that is we ate our most perishable fruits and vegetables first. By the end of the month, we were going through more like root vegetables and apples and such, things that have a longer shelf life. The berries and the bananas and everything got eaten at the beginning. Back to bread. This is how I have always frozen my bread, okay? Now, I did not get this bread recently. I know there is like a bread crisis going on. I got this bread probably a month or so ago. Whenever I got it, and back in the day when I would get my 15 loaves at the time, and now we lived 40 minutes from most stores, and I think all my kids were like 10 and under, 12 and under. You know, I did it like that for several years. And it was just easier for me as a mama to get what I needed and then be home and not have to run out to the store all the time. So I just throw entire loaves in the freezer whenever we need them. Whenever we need another loaf, I take it, I put it into the refrigerator, it defrosts, or I set it out on the counter. It'll be ready a few hours later. I don't do any extra wrapping or anything special when it comes to freezing bread. So I know right now there's some of you who you can't go back out and maybe you have, I know there's some of you who are not in a position to go back out. Um, maybe you've gotten groceries for a family member who's immunocompromised or elderly or can't go out for, you know, a whole, people have their reasons. So you can keep your bread in your refrigerator. But if you're concerned and you don't want it to go bad, or let's say you're getting ready to shelter in place or there's already a shelter in place, Whatever your reason, mama, that you need to freeze your bread, just throw it in your freezer. It will do fine in there. I have frozen bread that way for months and months. Freeze your bread. That's it, simple as that. And don't get too impressed with my bread collection because uh, uh, as I said, we, uh, we were a smaller family. I would go through 15 loaves or so a month. Um, now we could easily, easily go through a loaf of day. I mean, a loaf is lunch. You know, that's like one sack of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Um, 
Two Loaves is a French toast breakfast. Now I do have videos coming out. I showed you my mixer. We're gonna do a bunch of different types of homemade bread and that's what I'm gonna start working on now. Of course I'm doing the videos for it, but I'm gonna start building up my stock of homemade bread to have because even now, like our local Walmart, we have one three minutes away since we moved here. They're limiting one loaf of bread per household, one gallon of milk per household, one dozen eggs per household. There's no flour, there's no sugar. I mean, there's, you know, it's, it's like that everywhere, right? So all that to say, I may not be able to get any more store-bought bread for a time. So I'm gonna make up a bunch of homemade bread and yay, we'll get that done. Something else that I have frozen with good success is just flour tortillas. We had some flour tortillas from some breakfast freezer meals that I was filming and sharing about and I have a new breakfast freezer meal pack getting ready to come out, all of that. Um, anyway, I had some extras. And so maybe, maybe in the past I would have said, oh, an extra pack of tortillas, we'll just feed it to the chickens. Right now, times are what they are. I threw the extra tortillas in the refrigerator. Uh, same use when you need them put them out on the counter or put them in your refrigerator the day before, they're gonna defrost just fine. Another hot commodity item right now, milk. Okay, I already mentioned what my stores are doing. And I don't say any of this to build fear. I hope that all of this just helps you and encourages you. And later when people come back to watch these videos and we don't have a worldwide pandemic, these are just great frugal pantry and emergency pantry type tricks to help you. So back in the day, when I would buy my 15 gallons of milk, now I know you can't go anywhere right now and buy 15 gallons of milk. A month ago, I got 12 gallons of milk, like it was nothing, because again, my family will drink a gallon a day. And if it's 12 gallons of milk for a family of 10, I don't even worry about freezing it. Now, over a decade ago, when I truly shop once a month, and what I mean by that is I didn't always go back for a second trip, it just wasn't in my budget. I just had every single penny down, and I knew how much milk I needed. So what I would do is I would keep about four gallons out in my main refrigerator in my kitchen, and then I would keep about four gallons in the back refrigerator, refrigerator part, and then I would freeze the difference, which would be about seven gallons, in the up top freezer. I could still put things on top of it or whatever. We would roll through milk, I guess about a gallon every two days. Um, anyway, so here's what I'm freezing milk for. I have currently two gallons from my last grocery haul from about a month ago. They're getting close to the date. We've obviously really cut back on our milk usage. We're not using it like for drinking so much. It's more for cooking. Um, so I know I'll be using those two gallons here, but again, I'm treating them like gold. So this is a gallon of whole milk. My husband had to go out yesterday, and when he goes out to the store right now, I am having him get a gallon of whole milk. I mean, he might only go once or twice a week. Well, why are you doing that, Jamarelle? Well, we have a baby goat coming that's gonna need bottle fed. One of the ways to bottle feed a baby goat is with whole milk. Normally, in our world, this would not be an issue. But right now, I don't want to bring a baby goat here and obviously not have several gallons of milk already frozen for him. Um, so that's something I'm thinking ahead on. So I've read different ways to freeze milk. Um, I know many years ago, I read a wonderful book called America's Cheapest Family. I think I read that one. I read that one a long, long time ago. And I think now they're called Money Smart Family. And I'm pretty sure they have a YouTube channel now too. But anyway, I believe what they said in their milk is they would open it and pour a little bit out or pour it into a cup, obviously, and then freeze it. And they that worked well for their family. So I'm a rebel and over a decade ago when I would come home with all this milk, I just stuck the whole gallon in the freezer. I never had any trouble with it. Okay, so here's a frozen gallon. Now, it gets a little misshapen. All I would do if I wanted my, if my family needed milk and I had some frozen, how would I get that? How, how would I get this back into a liquid? So obviously we're gonna defrost it. It takes about two days or so. If you take a gallon of milk and put it into your, refri your refrigerator, from your freezer into your refrigerator, it's gonna take at least two days for it to defrost and slowly get back to a liquid form. 
Also, if there's gonna be a lot of ice, so I do as it's defrosting, you know, whenever I'm in that back refrigerator, whenever I go, ch uh, whenever I go to get something else and I see the frozen milk, you just shake it up. Obviously, this one is frozen solid. Um, I've never had trouble doing it this way. Now, many milks, and these milks don't, um, many milks have like a, uh, a dent or divot on the side. Now, I had heard a bazillion years ago that that was, but I'm, I may be spreading misinformation here, okay, but I'll tell you what I heard, um, is that that was because milk can freeze during transport, and so that helps it in the freezing and defrosting process. I don't know. One of my YouTube viewers, her, she said her husband drives a milk truck, and that's not true. So don't listen to me on that. Only thing I'm teaching you, only thing I'm sharing today is you can take a gallon of milk and you can put it in your freezer. It can be a month past its date. You can take it out, set it in your refrigerator for two days or so. You're gonna do some shaking because you wanna get it you know, all creamy and mixed up again. And then you're gonna have milk that's good for drinking, for cereal, for cooking. It's milk, again, a hot commodity. So if someone blessed you with some extra milk, I know right now I'm seeing a lot of restaurants that have to close down right now in our country in general. I'm seeing pictures all over Facebook where restaurants are, are letting some families come in and get what they need. I know one of my friends was blessed with a couple extra gallons of milk and a whole bunch of eggs. You know, there's, there's people who are getting bulk food items. It's like, how can we be one of those people? But there are people being blessed with bulk food items they don't usually have that much of in their home. Also, if you're getting your gallon when you go out and you've cut way back on your household drinking of milk, but you're trying to hold on to your milk for your cooking, for your baking, for your recipes, which obviously everyone's doing a whole lot of cooking at home right now, um, then that's where if your family's not going to drink it, and maybe you have a half gallon that you're slowly eking away at the refrigerator, if you freeze your next gallon, if you need to, if you're worried about the day. So a whole lot of ways it could be helpful in freezing milk. And then futuristically, when all things are back to normal, if you're doing once a month grocery shopping or even buy weekly grocery shopping, or if you wanna keep an extra gallon in your freezer, for such a time as this, that's how that could work for you. Two other things that you can freeze. Oh, and also, obviously, milk's gonna be a little wobbly. Um, if you had a metal bowl, um, if you wanna put it in your refrigerator that way, like visuals uh, you know if you want to set it in a bowl like that if you want to set it in a baking dish I'm picturing a rubber tub uh, you got to use what you have at home right now right but you can set it in that and that'll help offset the floppiness there okay. okay then so some other refrigerator staples that Again, you might not have room for in your refrigerator. You might have been given extra of. Uh, you might have bought. You might have bought extra butter, and you want to make sure you have butter for later. All the reasons. Shredded cheese. Again, you just take the cheese, throw it in your freezer. That's it. As long as your cheese is shredded, it's going to freeze just fine. Then you can take it out for casseroles, for tacos, for toppings on soup. Uh, for cheese on your eggs. Cheese is going to do great there. Butter has a good shelf life. What is this? This is, um, come on, I just saw the date here. Come on, date. Okay, we're going to look at every side. I'm going to find the date. There it is. This butter is good until July 30th, 2020. We've got several months on the date here, but any way it goes. I mean, I saw someone maybe within the last six months who they went to Sharp Shopper. That's our closeout grocery store here in this area. And we've got like three locations in different directions. It's wonderful. Um, I have not been there during this current crisis at all. Again, trying to just stay home as much as possible. Um, heart not going out at all. Anyway, but my friend got like these double packs of butter were, I want to say they were a dollar or something. They were crazy. 
Sharp Shopper had a ton of them. My friend does a lot of baking, and I think she got like 10 or 15 packs and just threw them into her freezer. It's best to freeze the butter if you can before it gets to its expiration date, but even once butter expires, you know, once it gets to the use-by date, best buy. 730 2020 even if you get to that date your butter is still going to be good for a little bit in your refrigerator all that to say if you want to freeze your butter this is real technical right you're taking notes i know okay freeze your butter there you go butter's in the freezer whenever you want your butter set it back out in your refrigerator I've heard that unsalted butter, um, frozen butter can last up to a year or more in the refrigerator. Unsalted butter might be up to six months or so. Don't even know where I heard that, but it's just, uh, just some things that I've heard. So we've talked about, now I never got the whiteboard out, so we've talked about freezing eggs. We're in the process of doing that. We've talked about freezing bread, freezing milk, freezing cheese, freezing butter. Um, cheese blocks, are going to be crumbly. Um, sour cream. Let's see if I have any sour cream. Now I do have, let's see, well this sour cream is February 27, 2020. Still good. So a lot of things, especially for you mamas who aren't used to being at home managing all this food all the time, I would totally still use this sour cream and it's almost a month past its date. There is no odor. There's nothing growing in it. This would be, this would have all kinds of fun mold. The green mold, the black mold, the red mold, all, all kinds, like your nose lets you know, and then your eyes let you know. So this sour cream, I would totally, I would still use this. Now I wouldn't freeze this, but I do have, um, I think two tubs of sour cream out in my outside refrigerator. And the date, I was going through checking dates on things today, taking inventory, kind of thinking through what I'll need and when I need it. Those kind of thoughts we're all thinking right now. Um, my two makings of sour cream are dated for April 15th. This one, I'll just, we'll have to use that here this week. Um, so if we got close to that date and I'm, and I'm on top of things, I can just put them in the freezer. Now the sour cream that you freeze is not going to, again, visuals here, the sour cream that you freeze is not gonna be like smooth and creamy sour cream that you would just love to dollop on a baked potato right now. It's not gonna have that consistency again. However, when you defrost it, it's perfect for baking. There's a lot of, basically any recipe that would have sour cream in it, you could, subs you could use your fr frozen sour cream in. Um, just so many things you can do with it. So if you have some sour cream, it's getting close to the date. And if you don't care how it looks, throw it in your freezer and you can use it later for different recipes and for replacements of different recipes. Um, so then the next thing I want to talk about, which I think is super, super important right now, um, I got, I've gotten more, more than one message from a mom who um, maybe bought Maybe she was able to buy a 15 pound bag of flour or a 25 pound bag of flour or a 10 pound bag of flour. I mean, flour is a hot commodity now. You can't find it anywhere. But there are moms contacting me who have flour and they want it to last. And they're not sure how to get the best shelf life from their flour. For flour that I'm currently using, I mean, I will be using this for all kinds of things. I have this container on my count my counter. Uh, you just want to put it in an airtight container. That's not the kind of um, concern questions that I'm getting. One mom in particular, and I think she was a single mom, bunch of kids, got a bunch of flour, and she has mice, and she's dealing with mice issues. Still in any person's situation, everyone's got flour at home now, what do we do with it? So this is actually, this is cornmeal that I would use for cornbread. And I have a cornbread recipe, I'll link it below. You can do it in the stove top, I mean, you can do it in the oven or in a, a bread machine. And if you've never done cornbread before, it's really easy and it's another way to stretch your all-purpose flour. So I would treat cornmeal as I would flour. So I'm gonna go get a thing of flour so we have to look at it. Okay, so then um, flour. 
Yes, okay. So this flower has a date on it. Better if used by August 19th, 2021. So it does have a long date on it. Um, and this is, it's my 10, a 10 pound, this is a 10 pound bag of flour. And this is flour I've had, I've had in my freezer for a bit. Um, and so that's my first thought to tell you what to do with your flour. If you wanna extend the shelf life, uh, if you wanna make sure three months from now you have flour to work with, mice haven't gotten into it. And I wanna say, screech, pause. I know, especially if you've watched my moving videos, I had videos where I was unloading pantry staples and doing lots of things on my garage shelves. For those of you who are concerned, that was, that was temporary <laughs> for me to get out of my moving head. I have since gone through, organized everything. You don't want to leave things like flour and instant mashed potato flakes and you know different pantry items, oatmeal and such, anywhere that critters can get into it. And during these times, I mean, I wouldn't chance it. So if you're able to, if you have some room in your freezer, what I have always done pretty much is just put whole bags of flour just like this into the freezer. It will kill, flour gets these wonderful little weevil creatures in it. Uh, it'll kill those kind of eggs and things, yummy, but that's why you cook it. Freezing it will kill those. Um, the concern is, and this is what I want to tell you, the concern is and if any kind of moisture gets into your dry flour, it can ruin your flour. So that's the risk you take doing it the way I've always done it, by putting a whole bag in the freezer. I've never had moisture get into it, but here I am telling you, you know, that, that's my concern for you. So what I would have you do is, uh, well, number one, and again, we all are working with what we have, because I do a lot of freezer meals, I have I have two boxes of these freezer bags left, and I also, when I went to IKEA, I got um, I got a bunch of their plastic bags too. So what I would tell you to do, and we will do this with this, is open up this bag of flour and divide it between a couple freezer bags. Now, you could do something. I know um, moms in my area are having a hard time finding flour, and I was telling a mom today, like these little size packages, this is two pounds. So yeah, a little two pound thing of flour. In my local area, you can still find these at the Dollar Tree. And so, if you have little packages like this of cornmeal or flour, and you want them to be stable and ready to go anytime you need them. Again, all of this could be over in a few weeks. We could still be dealing with things and food issues in a few months. None of that is for, for fear. I say all of that just as reality. None of us know. So I would say your pantry items, your dry goods that you have on hand, but it's time when you're hunkering down, do the best you can to ensure that they're gonna be safe. So, with these smaller packages of flour, you can put them, let's see if I can get two in here, okay. And that did, didn't damage my bag. Might have worked better if I flipped them the other way. Let's, let's test it, let's just test all the things here. And the date on this cornmeal says, best if used by January 14th, 2021. Now, let's say you don't have freezer space, and I get it, I totally do. Um, I feed a large family of 10 all the time, plus, you know, a lot of my work is food. So I have to store food and have food and all of that. But I get it, if you don't have an extra freezer or refrigerator in your garage, even if all you can do is get small bags like this in gallon freezer bags, and then, as the saying goes, store it in a cool, dark place. Another thing that you could do is get a plastic tote. Again, I'm thinking of, of mamas who, you know, you're home now, you've got these pantry items, maybe you have mice or other critters that you're dealing with, and you just want to have your food safe to feed your babies, right? It doesn't have to be anything that big, and this is good. This is good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It um, doesn't have to necessarily be one this big, but surely a lot of us have totes around our house, right? And so, 
you know, this is a, a pretty deep one. I'm trying to think how many gallons this is. Maybe it was 30, 15 or 30. Um, but this is like a five to seven dollar Walmart thing. So if you can, if you don't have one already, get yourself something like this and then you can bag up and put pantry staples in it and then put the lid on it. And that would be one of the ways outside of freezing. Okay, but if you're able to put it in your freezer, I would at least put it in a bag, put it in a freezer bag like this. You could write the date on it for when you're gonna put it in there. When you go to use it, take this cornmeal for instance, you don't have to defrost it or do anything. You can use it right out of the freezer. Then when you're done using it, let's say I was gonna use two cups to make some corn, cornbread muffins. When you're done using it, you just zip it back up, you put it right back in the freezer. You can use it anytime you need it out of the freezer, which makes freezing these kind of pantry goods perfect. Okay, so then this is a bigger thing, bigger thing. And again, I want you to be better than me and uh, be better than your mama, right? And we're gonna actually put this into some gallon freezer bags. I am going to label what they are and put the date on it, but same, same, you can use your flour out of the bag zip it back up, you can put it back in the freezer, and it's there fresh with no critters in it and no critters getting into it anytime you need it. Again, use what you have. You gotta be real creative now. Um, if you don't have a tea pitcher, I bought this because my husband has a certain type of tea that he likes to drink that a lot of times we just go ahead and buy it. You know, he doesn't want much in life. But I thought, well, if we have to make homemade unsweetened tea, which I know the easiest thing in the world to make, right? What am I doing with my life? Anyway, I got us two more gallon pitchers. So you can just do a little something like this. It's not gonna hold it open perfectly, but that'll be enough. Now let's not waste any of this preciousness. Let me know, I know I've shared doing homemade biscuits, homemade pancakes, homemade waffles. Let me know if you would like to see a video of all the things you can do with your uh, flour. Now a lot of times in the past when I've been baking, I mean I might use 10 pounds of flour and be doing a bunch of freezer biscuits and waffles and pancakes, but I can see because this bag, I'm like, is this feeling a little wet on the outside or not? If you were taking a bag in and out and left it out for too long, I could just, you just gotta watch it because again, our concern is moisture, okay? But that could even happen taking any of these bags out. Just be mindful, take them out, get what you need, put them back. And your flour, I mean, a year to two years in, in the freezer, really. There's oils in it, and that's what, if it's left out, can cause it to go rancid, plus getting critters in it. So, excuse me, I'm trying to get on the little air out here. So these are the things you wanna watch for. But freezing it takes care of basically any issue you could have with pantry flour. And then, if you had the extra bags if you wanted to, I mean, if you were just really concerned right now about being able to get any flour anytime soon, you could even double bag it. So here we go. We've got 10 pounds of flour now in two gallon freezer bags. I'm gonna get these in the freezer. And then also with this um, cornmeal, you can do, this, do the same thing. I could take these out of little packages and um, store them separately in a gallon bag. I feel fine with these with the size of them, putting them in the freezer like that. Okay, so then I've gotten some more, dug some more things out here to talk to us about. Another thing that I know people have on hand right now is rice. Now, of course, all of these items in perfect pantry conditions, you know, which is a cool, dry place with no invaders coming in. Um, they should be good for a year to 18 months, honestly. You know, even with oatmeal and we've got instant mashed potato flakes and flour and cornmeal. I mean, these things should last a while in a pantry, but for various concerns and reasons, 
all of this can be put in the freezer as well. Brown rice, honestly, I'm just, I put whole bags in the freezer. I am like the laziest, the laziest freezer person ever. Um, and of course this says flour on it, but you can even write rice. And you can put your rice in the freezer. It's gonna be just like the flour. And you can just use what you need from the freezer. You don't need to do any special defrosting or any special handling with it. It's gonna be kept perfect in the freezer for a nice long time. So again, use the bag it came in, but for a little extra extra, you can put it in a freezer bag. Same thing with oatmeal. Now, normal for me is to buy a 25 pound bag of oatmeal whenever I go to a store like Sharp Shopper that sells oatmeal and flour and sugar in those big bags. Whenever I can't get to a Sharp Shopper for oatmeal and such, I have always gotten them at Walmart. Of course, right now, another hot commodity and I think some stores are limiting these. Um, the date on this oatmeal is September 19th, 2021. Oatmeal is another thing though that you have to watch like the little weevil bugs and stuff. So if you're concerned about your oatmeal, if you're concerned about the temperature in your pantry, I know we're filling up a freezer here with all these little pantry staples, but if you're able to get them in the freezer and if that would make you feel more comfortable with the things you have on hand, go for it. So again, with this oatmeal, you just need to freeze it in a freezer bag. Now, I will probably have videos coming out on this, but I'm just gonna throw this information at you. Um, let's say you make oatmeal and I, I go, I have two different stages of making oatmeal. I either make too much and then we have oatmeal for a few mornings or I don't make enough and then I'm making, <laughs> making more the same morning. Uh, it just depends. Some days I have very eager oatmeal either eaters than others. With your leftover oatmeal, you can freeze it in individual little cups. Again, think of like the little muffin pans that we're currently freezing those eggs in. Freeze your oatmeal in those little individual cups, pop them out. You can put them in little individual baggies, use the re re reusable baggies from Ikea, well, any way you want to swing it. You could have a gallon freezer bag with 20 different single serving oatmeals in it that someone just pulls out whenever they want oatmeal. Very versatile. So if you're not used to working with oatmeal a lot, um, I use this in meatloaf all the time as a binder instead of bread. Also, you can do a lot of cookies with oatmeal, a lot of baked goods with oatmeal. So lots of oatmeal goods coming at you. I'll link some recipes below using oatmeal. But anyway, we're gonna put some old fashioned oats in the freezer here, but again, in your freezer, your oatmeal is gonna be good for a year to 18 months or more. Other pantry storage, which I'm not showing that in this video, um, and again, it's just gonna depend on what you can get your hands on. You can get five gallon buckets with food grade lids. Uh, I was looking at the other day, you get these food bags to store your flour in buckets, um, store your oatmeal, store your beans and such. But again, we're just, we're using and freezing and conserving and stretching what we have. Another thing, so instant mashed potatoes. Again, these should be good for a year or so in your pantry. Whenever you open them, if you're not, I mean, if I open one of these, I'm, I'm using the whole thing at one time. That may not be the case in your family. So you can put what is left in the freezer or if you're just concerned, about your instant mashed potatoes, and right now instant mashed potatoes are really important, you can put them in a freezer bag. Put them in your freezer. Another thing that does not need any kind of special defrosting, use what you need and then put them back. Now the date on these are August 6, 2021. So fine in a pantry if you're comfortable with it, but if not, here's how we do it for the freezer. Now, one thing I've ordered recently, again, with my, with my current quest for milk in life, and I mentioned I have about two gallons left for cooking. I have a couple gallons of the vitamin D frozen for the upcoming little billy goat. But again, we're just not sure. How long will the one gallon of milk per household last? I don't know. All that to say, something that I did even today was, and of course in the stores you can't find powdered milk, or if you can, I mean that's something, if you see a package of powdered milk, 
and you're concerned about not having milk for your family right now, get it, get, get the powder, get a thing of powdered milk, leave one for someone else, get one for your family, all that. For a while, I was not seeing powdered milk even available on Amazon. And that's something that's concerning to me that has uh, ignited my little homesteader that was, my homesteader's been paused for a while. My homesteader is awakened now within my soul. It's been concerning to me even the lack of things on Amazon. You know, I see people telling large families, oh, well, if you can't get what you need at the store, just order it, have it delivered to you. A lot of places where you order are sold out as well. So all that to say, today I looked for powdered milk on Amazon and I found two different companies that currently have powdered milk. I will link the powdered milk that I'm ordering down in the description below. Um, it's two different brands. I don't know which one would be best. They're both probably six one way, half dozen another. When I've gotten bigger bags of oatmeal, when my family's in a season we're using a lot, we go through it quickly, but sometimes I've, I have had times in the class confessing all my sins where I might have a 25 pound bag of oatmeal get away from me. I did not get it in a bucket. I had just been using it right out of my pantry and then maybe it got little bugs in it. Um, I could have I could have frozen that, right? Yay for freezers. Now I did talk to another large family, mama friend of mine, and she had someone who'd been wanting to give her an extra freezer for a while. I think maybe it was at her uh, a family member's house and they had told her for a while, you could get this freezer. So it was used, it was free, the price was right. And because of this current situation, she went ahead and got that freezer. And then I was at the grocery store last week shopping for a family member who wasn't going out. And um, there was another couple in the store and we got to talking and the gentleman was saying, we've had that freezer in our garage for two years and all it's had in it is an extra bag of ice. So people are, are learning the importance of their freezers now if they have them. Let's say you don't have an extra full freezer or just an extra freezer in general. This shows you we've got two boxes of dried potatoes. So this is about four, almost five pounds total of oatmeal, 10 pounds of flour, two pounds of rice, and four pounds of cornmeal. So this would take up probably the bottom of someone's freezer. And then also, I'm talking about freezing it, of course, but let's say you don't have the extra room in your freezer quite yet. You could, of course, put some of this in your refrigerator. You could put some of this back in your pantry. Just keep an eye on it. Put, you could put some of this in a tote like this. Just make sure you're, and, and you know, right now, times like these, I, I would check in on it. Like check your pantry stock every day, see how it's doing. See if there's any critter activity. Make sure you're using things up. Check your dates. You know, everyone has a little bit of extra time right now. And then I laugh, I'm like, I haven't found any of this extra time yet, <laughs> but we're all home right now. So you could make yourself a pantry list with all your items in your pantry and the expiration dates and just keep that handy so you know things that you need to use soon. We've done frozen eggs, frozen bread, frozen milk, frozen cheese, frozen butter, um, how to freeze flour, how to freeze rice, how to freeze oatmeal, how to freeze cornmeal, how to freeze dry mashed potatoes. I also wanted to tell you I have a brand new, in light of the current situation, emergency pantry list with the most needed pantry items you should try to have on hand. Also a pantry inventory list so you can go through, write down what you have, how many pounds, write down the expiration dates, how you're freezing it. Also a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly meal planner, all kinds of goodies. So that will actually be the first link in the description below where you can get that. Okay, so this is a, a small top freezer here. These eggs, uh, they're, I still wouldn't pop them out yet, but they were frozen enough where I can kind of <laughs> rig up my pan here. I wanted to show you how much room this took up in the top of my freezer. Obviously, have, if you have more freezer room, you can freeze more things. But here's a good sampling of keeping these particular pantry items fresh in the freezer for a long period of time. Okay, ladies, it has been 
couple hours, maybe two hours or so, these eggs are able to be popped out. So, bam, I'm just gonna have a baggie full of eggs here. Now, whenever you do want to use eggs from your frozen egg stash, you'll wanna take out however many you need. They're gonna need to defrost so it might be where you pull out what you need the night before. I have also heard from some moms, even when I shared about this on Instagram today, who have had trouble with the yolks. One mom said that she used to have to pop the yolks and add a little salt. So there's something you can try. I've never done it that way, but there are certainly other ways and methods. Again, you can also go ahead and mix the eggs up and freeze them already mixed. So these will go out in the freezer. Those will go back out if they do need a bit longer. There they are in the freezer with those other pantry staples now. So thank you for hanging out with me all afternoon while we froze all of these emergency pantry staples and froze the eggs and just froze all the things. I do plan to do a part two video coming up soon where we're gonna freeze fresh fruits and vegetables. I also wanna go through different ways to freeze beans. So there'll be another video. Please let me know down in the comments below. Share other things that you have successfully frozen. Let us know any tips or tricks with that. Also be sure to click the link in the description box to of course go to the blog and see see the step-by-step -step directions and pictures for all of these things, this how to freeze series, but also click to get my brand new emergency pantry planning kit that has all the forms and printables that you need to keep on top of your pantry always, but especially right now with all the loosey goosey stuff we got going on. Remember, I love you. Jesus loves you. I'll be back real soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.